Hello everyone, welcome to Simple Life Truth Series. I want to really thank everyone for your support so far. Um, for those of us who have given feedbacks, um, it means um, the world to us. I want to also encourage everyone who is watching to please continue to give their feedback. In fact, we're actually preparing for a Q&A session where um, from the episodes we have shot so far, um, if people have questions, maybe a bit of unclarity here and there, please send those questions. The uh, email address is on the screen um, as we speak, uh, but you can also type in the comment section what those questions are and we would curate those questions and then we'll have a session where we can address them, you know. Um, I think it's just part of the process where we want to, you know, build more understanding of what we've been discussing and all for our edification. Um, on this week's episode, we'll be talking about what we've titled Truth versus Fact. Truth versus Fact. Um, the question really is, what is the truth and what is the fact? I'll start with the truth. The truth is a sum total of God's promise for your life. And it's not just a part of your life, but holistically, what God has said concerning your life holistically end to end. That's the truth. That doesn't change. That is always your standing. But the fact is really a, re a mirror of your current situation and circumstances. And that just mirrors exactly what you're going through. So every day, there is that battle between what the truth is concerning our situation or concerning our life and what the fact says. Now you see, that difference between the truth and the fact always is a sum total of our life's journey. So every day we're working towards, even as Christians, as individuals, whatever you call it, we're working towards bridging that gap between the truth and the fact. And for some of us, we may have been fortunate to bridge the gap between the truth and the fact in some certain aspect of our life. So for example, let's say some people are clear about their purpose and why God had created them for. And so they are already in line with that purpose. That's where you have mirrored your truth versus your fact some people are aloof they don't even know <laughs> you know why they're here and they just yeah. go daily going by and that is a gap right but what is god's truth generally concerning our lives and you have to go to third john chapter 1 verse 2 and this is very critical for the scripture says beloved i wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth wow so the scripture is telling us that above everything, what God really wants for us is that we prosper. We not just prosper, we be in health. Okay, so your prosperity is wired with good health, right? And even as your soul prospers, so your soul also has to prosper. So it's a complete total package of prosperity. So your soul is made up of three quick things, uh, your emotions, your will, and your intellect. So what God is saying is that even in your soul, there is the prosperity of your emotions. So you will need to prosper your emotional life, right? Your will, which is what you set out to do every day, you need to prosper that. And your intellect, whatever you, um, you know, you have, whatever profession you've taken to do, you need to prosper. So this is the truth that God wants us to prosper in our soul, will, emotions, intellect, he wants us to prosper in our health, and wants us to prosper broadly. But the question is, when you look at your life, vis-a-vis -vis what that truth is, are you reflecting that truth? The answer to many people is actually no. So what are you professing? Now, the journey and, and the big question in the conversation today is how do we plug that gap between what the truth says and what the fact says? So take for example, the fact is you're broke as we speak, you're broke. But what is the truth? The truth is in, in Philippians chapter 4 verse 17. The Bible says that the Lord will supply all your needs according to his riches now listen it is the lord that will supply your needs it is not the job that you are you, that you are being paid to do it's not the fact that you're jobless no and then he says according to his riches so the supply is not also coming from it's not a virtue of the economy downturn so whether there's coronavirus or whether there's economy downturn it doesn't matter because god's supply of your needs is not a function of anything that you can control here he says according to his riches and glory but you know, that's the truth. But the fact is that many of us today, our supply 
is giveaway, right? <laughs> our supply is, uh, you know, the stipends that your parents give to you. Our supply is the 400,000 dollar job that you have. Our supply is the 100, 200, five, whatever. Our supply is the small business that we're doing. That is the fact. But that's not the truth. Because that fact would always change. Because the, tr the, the fact is a snapshot in time of what exactly your situation says. But you see, we speak to the atmosphere. We've been redeemed. We've talked about it, how you're a king to reign on the earth. And you need to speak to the atmosphere. So when you profess your fact continuously, you continue to remain there. But you see, the message today is you need to disassociate yourself from your fact and understand your truth and continue to speak your truth so that you challenge very critical. You challenge your fact with your truth. You have to continually challenge your fact with your truth. And if I bring it home and say, look, what are the three things? How can I close the gap between my fact and between the truth? Number one, you must know what your truth is. And that's the problem. Many people are not taking out time to know what the truth is concerning different aspects of their lives. So if you look at anything about you right now that you don't, you're not happy with, maybe it's the job, you are underpaid, you don't like the job you're going through, maybe it's your relationship you're struggling, maybe it's your anxiety, maybe it's the worry, maybe it's your family, maybe it's your spouse, whatever it is, maybe it's your profession. If you're not happy about something about your life today, that is the fact. I'm telling you, take a moment, step aside, and think and find, actually, find what is God's truth or what is the truth because that doesn't change for my life, for that particular situation. When you find that truth, I just gave an example of being broke and versus the supply that God has given to us. The supply is limitless, but it is at variance with our fact most times, right? You need to take that truth when you find the truth. The next thing you need to do is after you write it down, because the Bible says also, write the vision, make it plain, read it and run. So find the truth, then keep on professing the truth, which means, which leads us to number two. You need to challenge consistently with frequency your facts with your truth. You have to do that. So even when you're broke, you need to wake up in the morning and tell yourself, the Lord says that you supplied my needs. You need to tell yourself, maybe you're sick, but you need to tell yourself, but the Lord says, by his stripes, I am healed. That's the truth, it doesn't change right you need to continue to challenge your your fact with your truth and number three what you really need to do is that you need to trust the process so when you find your truth when you challenge your fact with your truth then you need to trust the process and Psalm chapter 34 verse 55 says they looked unto him and their face were lightened and they were faces were not ashamed so if you trust the process by looking unto him because you found your truth because you continually challenge your fact with your truth the bible has given us that assurance that you will, your face will be enlightened which means that you find joy unspeakable full of glory for some reason when you know your truth and you speak your truth even though it's at variance with your fact there is that joy there's that peace that you get the bible says your face is enlightened because you're looking up to him then he says you will not be ashamed many of us need to hold god to that his word right and we've talked about the efficacy of his word but you need to find it you need to challenge the fact that you need to trust the process now i'm saying this because i know what it means to um to have your fact that is not aligned with your truth and actually holding on to the truth regardless of what your fact says and i'll give you my own short um story um, today, um, I know I know when you'll be watching this, we shot this on Father's Day, so happy Father's Day in Arias because you'll be watching it a week after the Father's Day. And I am a proud father who is celebrating Father's Day because of God's, because of um, what God has done for us and because of our ability to hold on to God's truth consigning our life when it has to do with the fruit of the womb. But the fact was we were barren for 60 years. We barren for six years and in those six years we tried but for some reason nothing happened and i will also use this as a as a way or to create some awareness for our ladies who are watching um you know when you're having a bit of um you know i, I know the thing with period and it, be, it, it being irregular please when you have that you need to actually see the doctor because it's extremely important for my wife it was irregular and you know initially she she didn't pay attention to it until you know we got married then it became an issue and then we realized that we were uh, we had to treat pcos polycystic ovarian syndrome 
and what that simply means is that you know you don't see your period so you means you don't ovulate and then officially you don't ovulate you don't have a baby and we had to deal with that and for the for the first six for first uh first second third year it was a struggle i remember um when you know again initially everybody felt okay maybe they were just giving it a year or two and when after the second year passed people started getting concerned but i was never worried and simply because I found my truth, right? There are, there are certain scriptures that we held on to. And I looked at Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 14. The Bible says, Thou shalt be blessed above all people, that there shall not be male or female barring among you or amongst your cattle. This is my truth. God has said, None shall be barring, not even my cattle. And I had pets, I had a, a dog who, has, who had given birth. So if my cattle can be productive, how much more me? That's my truth. But the fact was, we were buried. That was what the fact was. We had another scripture, Psalms 128 verse 3. The Bible says, Thy wife shall be a fruitful vine by thy sides of thy house. Thy children like olive plants around thy table. Ah, around my table. Psalms 113 verse 9. The Bible says, He maketh the barren woman to keep her house. And to be a joyful mother of children, praise the Lord. These were truth concerning fruitfulness. So even when the first, second year, third year went and we didn't have, you know, our baby, we we're holding on to the truth. Now, yes, there were times where, of course, even my wife was worried and she was concerned. But I, for one, of course, I'm the spiritual leader of the home. And I never, for one day, doubted that this would happen. Didn't matter how long it took. And that's what we're telling you, know your truth. Then challenge your facts with your truth. So when we pray, we will say, Lord, this is what you promised. This is what you promised. My facts may not show it, but I know the truth that you have said towards me. And the third thing, like we said, was that we had to remain patient. I remember when we had the first, I think it was in the second year, we had the first, um, we used the kit, pregnancy kit, and it was positive. And we were jumping and shouting. <laughs> you know, we told all the family members. And the next day we went to the hospital to do a blood test. And boof, it was a false positive. It was heartbreaking. And again, there were tears and all of that. But like I said, the truth, the truth is very, it doesn't change. And on the fourth year, I remember when we decided to try the IVF. So we spent over a million and you know how expensive it is. We spent a million and we we're trying and, and it, it, it it, it, my wife took it so it was it worked so to speak but on the sixth seventh week i remember seventh week we went we're, go, we're going to do a scan to see our baby and you know you know you, i think at that point you're supposed to see like a, a bob right and when we went to the hospital and we did the scan at the seventh week because the the blood result had said the blood test had said positive the home test everything had said positive so we're, we're good and she was feeling you know like she was pregnant so when we got to the hospital and we wanted to do the scan to see our baby and just you know you know just thank god because it's done this was the 40th we scanned there was nothing it's like what's going on <laughs> there had to be something like we all the papers said it was true it was heartbreaking again there was nothing and then the day after she bled so we lost we lost the babies at the seventh week this was on the 40th year but regardless we we're confident of what the truth concerning our situation was and then finally when god visited us november 2019 when my wife took in again and you know and this time around jazel now stayed and you'll see his picture on the screen lovely uh, wonderful boy he stayed but on the seventh month the devil again tried us and and this is why we said that you have to be patient trust the process and don't forget what the truth is regardless of your fact on the seventh month we're told um fortunately she was able to make the u.s before the lockdown um and the virus and everything and we were told that the baby was anemic wow so we had waited this long and the baby was anemic and the way the doctor explained it was that we needed to go to john hopkins and if you know the, uh, john hopkins is one of the very good hospitals but very expensive in the u.s and we would need to drop 
for ten thousand dollars for that procedure and they explained so the money was a big challenge but let's even keep the money aside they then said that to to what they would need to do in terms of the process is that they will have to open her up this is a seven month old baby open her up pregnancy open her up then infuse blood or give the baby blood and it is a 50 50 chance that the baby will survive <laughs> they had seen it they had confirmed it she was scheduled for the surgery a night to the surgery <laughs> a night to the surgery we you know the family members my parents friends we got into our prayers room and we had to find another truth now remember there's the truth of we shall not be buried we found that truth so now she's pregnant but we had to find another truth to tackle this problem <laughs> what was the truth my particular scripture that i remember that night we warred with heaven for was um isaiah 66 verse 9 the bible says shall i bring to birth and not and not cause you to bring forth oh my god shall i bring you to birth and not cause you to bring forth which means it means that can i start the process of your of your of your of your fertility where you take in and i'll not allow you complete the process <laughs> he says says the lord shall i cause you to bring forth and then shut up the womb <laughs> ah when i saw this my antennas rose up the truth god says will i bring to birth will i ask you to take in and i will not cause you to now bring forth and i told god i said this is the truth as i 66 verse 9 this is your word we're asking us they're asking us to do a surgery and it's 50 50 that's the truth that's the the fact that's the report of the doctor but you have said in your word that you will not start the process and not finish it because you are the author and you're the finisher of our faith and so we prayed to God and we called out heaven and said, You cannot, you're not a you're not that is a God that, that engages in uncompleted assignment. You don't do uncompleted project, you must complete this project. And if the surgery is 50-50, then we call on you for a divine intervention. In the morning, they had moved out to John Hopkins Hospital. This nurse, the, the lead doctor, had seven doctors by her side. And she said before starting the operation, that let her. Take, in fact, we had we didn't have the fourteen thousand dollars, so we had to pay you know um, a ten percent, which is a thousand four hundred dollars. We had already deposited it, and she said, "Oh, let her take the test and see again, just to reconfirm the result that they've confirmed seven times." <laughs> oh my God! And they confirmed the first time. They saw the result was negative. She was not anemic anymore. The threshold for anemia uh, uh, had reduced. And the lady said, <laughs> the doctor said, "No, let her try it again." And she tested again, and the results came out negative. My baby was not anemic for the second time. She tried it five times. The morning of the surgery, they were prepared. Five times, and the result was negative. And then she looked at my wife and she said, I don't have a justification to open you up. Because just yesterday, the results showed you were anemic. The baby was anemic. We had to do the surgery. But this morning, everything had normalized. And that was how God saved us. Saved us from that surgery. And saved us from, saved my son, from the risk of actually even not being alive today. And that only came because we found the truth for the situation that we were dealing with, regardless of the fact. So... My challenge to you today, listening to me, watching me, is saying, if you don't like what you go through, if you are not happy with your situation, find your truth, number one. Find the truth, what God has said particular, for that particular situation. Because it's there, it's in the scripture. You just need to find it. And number two, challenge the facts with the truth. And number three, trust the process. And trusting the process means you activate your faith. You keep professing what you believe. Keep professing that truth. And you will see with time that God will bring to pass that particular promise. And that your fact will begin to align with your truth. Because the place you want to be is a place where your fact and your truth are aligned. And that's the perfect place that God has designed for us. And that's the place where God said that you prosper and you'll be in health. Even as your soul prospers. Until next week, stay free in truth.
because the truth will set you free. I remain your host, Jeremy Danokai.